Canadian aquaculture increasingly depends on developing sustainable aquaculture feeds. DFO scientist Ian Forster is working on a project to provide farmed fish with the best nutrition and performance while ensuring that the feed ingredients themselves are from sustainable sources. I try to find uh, ingredients and feeds that uh, are, uh, meet the needs of the animal for uh, nutrition, uh, for good growth, for efficiency, and uh, many of the fish that we raise in aquaculture are carnivorous. So uh, traditionally we've used fish meal which is made from other fish which are uh, in many cases harvested for that purpose. Well we've been moving towards using uh, other protein sources and lipid sources, oil sources, uh, and to do that we have to be able to establish the quality of those products. And one of, the, one of the things that we look at, in addition to the nutrient concentration of these alternative ingredients, is things like digestibility. How well are the nutrients taken in by the animal and used in their body? Many of these ingredients that we're looking at, plant proteins for example, are a lot more cost effective uh, than fish meal. And so if we can find that they are able to supply the nutrition that the animal needs and in a digestible way, uh, and then we can use them and reduce the cost. DFO researchers at the St. Andrews Biological Station are also helping develop an aquaculture production system that is not only environmentally friendly, but even self-sustaining. It's called integrated multitrophic aquaculture. IMTA involves caged aquaculture species like salmon that require feeding and combining them with certain other species like seaweed and shellfish, which can extract nutrients from the fish waste and fish feed. What it creates is a more balanced, productive and sustainable system. Sustainability is really the ability of a system to maintain itself for long periods of time with no degradation to the associated environment. And that's sort of what we're doing. We're taking the, basically a very simple principle within aquaculture. It's, it's basically recycling, you know, the way Mother Nature would do. We started this project and, we, you know, by linking together the salmon, the mussels and the kelp. And it exploded from there. I mean, the, we got all sorts of wonderful results. We found that everything that we put on the site was, was growing quite a bit faster than they would in normal conditions because they were utilizing the resources, which was the point of putting them there in the first place, right? And then we started finding all sorts of other things that were going on where it seemed like uh, we were providing habitat for a whole bunch of other species. For example, some of the wild species actually would come in, the juveniles would use some of the mussel rafts, because they were strings of mussels that hung down, and they would use that as shelter. So now we're providing sort of secondary habitat for those, and the biodiversity of the site goes way up because we're effectively creating a, a hanging reef. So you can see that we're working at scales now that, that really start to come into the whole realm of, of what happens in nature. It's not just a little scientific experiment with a half a dozen mussels sitting in a bag somewhere. I mean, we're really looking at what's happening out there with systems. Speaking of mussels and systems, at the Maurice Lamontagne Institute in Montjoly, Quebec, DFO scientists like Marcel Frechette are working with producers on ways to reduce the labor costs involved in raising mussels. Uh, les collecteurs autogérés, c'est une nouvelle méthode uh, pour faire l'élevage de la moule qui a été proposée par un méticuleur de Carleton, uh, Eric Bugeau, qui lui est intéressé à développer une approche qui permette uh, de faire l'élevage de la moule à temps partiel, c'est-à-dire uh, donc en investissant moins de temps puis d'efforts que on le fait normalement pour l'élevage de la moule uh, avec la méthode classique qui, elle, est une méthode qui implique euh, le boudinage, euh, qui est simplement le fait de mettre des jeunes moules dans des filets tubulaires puis les suspendre dans l'eau pour l'élevage. Dans le cas des collecteurs autogérés, c'est une étape qui n'est pas faite tout simplement parce qu'ils il laissent euh, les jeunes moules se fixer directement sur les cordes puis ils font l'élevage euh, sur ces cordes-là. Donc, il n'y a pas le transfert qui est lié à ce qu'on appelle le boudinage. Donc, ils sautent une étape ce qui leur permet de sauver beaucoup de temps, puis donc euh, éventuellement de faire l'élevage à temps partiel euh, en y investissant moins de temps. 
Also at Montjoly, scientists like Denis Chabot are studying other species, which can improve the diversification of the industry and increase the sustainability of aquaculture in Canada. The spotted wolffish is one of those alternative species being investigated for aquaculture development, and it shows some promise. Je suis impliqué dans deux projets complémentaires. Les deux portent sur le, le loup tacheté, une espèce qui a un potentiel agricole très intéressant au Québec. Euh, la plupart des espèces de poissons marins qui sont élevées dans un contexte d'aquaculture le sont en cage, euh, des cages en mer, ce qui est difficile à faire au Québec à cause de, de la présence des glaces en hiver. On a conçu deux projets qui se complètent. Le premier vise à, à déterminer, dans un contexte qui se rapproche le plus possible des conditions d'un élevage commercial, le taux de croissance du loup acheté pour euh, déterminer si, euh, si ça serait rentable ou pas dans une aventure commerciale. Le deuxième euh, porte plus à essayer de comprendre les résultats du premier, c'est-à-dire qu'on veut, on veut mieux connaître le métabolisme du loup. Tous les commentaires que j'ai entendus euh, vont à l'effet que le goût est, est excellent. C'est euh, un produit, où, le loup, on, on peut utiliser aussi son, son cuir euh, qui serait commercialisé. Euh, et euh, il y a de plus en plus d'intérêt pour des biomolécules provenant de poissons qui euh, pourraient être utiles pour euh, soit le, le, le traitement de, de, de maladies ou... Euh, ou pour uh, simplement uh, se, se garder en santé. On the east coast of Canada, there has been a great deal of interest in halibut as an alternative species for aquaculture. In fact, commercial production has already begun, thanks to some significant research and support from scientists like Debbie Martin Robichaud at St. Andrew's Biological Station. The reason I'm in, in this funny little get-up here and with a hat on and everything else is because I'm going to get into the halibut tank and lift up some of the halibut on the table and check their spawning condition. I'm going to see if the males are, have running milt and that sort of thing. There we go. This is a nice running male. We are doing research to develop broodstock technology to support industry so that they can develop in an environmentally sustainable and economically sustainable fashion. And recently we've made some very phenomenal success with developing broodstock that are capable of producing all female stocks of halibut. Now this is extremely relevant for the industry because Atlantic halibut females grow a lot faster and get to a much bigger size than males. So since all this research has been done, it, we want industry to use it. At this point in time, they're using those broodstock and producing all-female juveniles and marketing them worldwide.